Hey there everyone, it's Baka here. Welcome to another Friday workshop. This is part two of becoming a better writer. Um, now if you'll notice, the background behind me is slightly different from what has been seen before. The video quality is slightly different. I am not at home. I'm up at my parents' house, um, sitting in their basement, um, which actually has better lighting than my apartment. Um, but... I'm on my web I'm on the webcam on my laptop, which is not as high of a quality, so I apologize for that. Now, recapping part one, part one we looked at some of the ways to start out bringing up a story. We talked about the three elements that create a quality story, and those were character, setting, and the action. Uh, there needs to be a good balance of those as we talked about. Um, for my money, it's the characters and the relatability of them that keep people wanting to read. Um, if the characters seem real, if they have real troubles, you're going to have a better time selling your story. Um, today we're going to talk about the planning stages of actually writing that story. Um, this taking place after that first step. Um, the first thing you need to know before you actually start writing is what type of story are you going to write? Are you going to write a short story, a novella, a novelette, a full novel? Um, the reason you need to know this is the type of story you're going to write, the type of planning you do, will be different for each of these different types of stories. Um, shorts, and the really only difference is the length. Short stories are generally anywhere from five pages to 15 to 20. A, no a novella is a little bit longer. A novelette is usually between 40 and 60 pages. And then the novel can be anywhere from, say, 100 pages to 1,000 plus pages. Um, a lot of authors in the science fiction and fantasy realm have these massive tomes of books. Um, the Wheel of Time series, they're huge. They take a long time to read through. Um, Brandon Sanderson, who's taken up Robert Jordan's work after, uh, since his death, his own novels are ridiculously big. Um, on the other hand... Orson Scott Card's newest novel, um, Shadows and Flight, that's it, it's fairly small. Um, he wanted to do a short novel, uh, almost a half a novel, especially for what he normally writes. But when you're planning these things, you need to know the length of your novel because when you have that idea down, it's going to determine how well you plan your stories. Now, for a short story, you need to keep the action fairly simple. You don't want to go too in-depth. You don't want to get have too much going on. If you have too much going on, you're going to write more. And you're going to... The more you write, the higher it goes. Novella, novelette, all the way up until you, before you know it, you've got a full novel. Um... If you plan for a short story and you start writing a whole lot more than a short story, there's probably a good chance that you could have told the whole story as a short story. Um, if you want to, if you want to be broader, if you want to do more things, plan for doing more things. Don't have a simple story and then go crazy with it. Um, I've been doing a lot of short story writing, a lot of playwriting. Uh, the playwriting, you've got to figure out, okay, what's the story I'm telling? How long can it does it need to be performed? And that's going to determine if it's a one-act, if it's a three-act play, um, how many cast members you have in there, what their interactions are. But it all comes down to the same things. Um, Personally, when I write a short story, I like to come up with a very simple kind of brainstorming set. 
I take those three basics, the characters, the setting, the action, and I write down a bunch of ideas for those. Um, I start tying them together. Okay, this happens. Then this happens. And I can be pretty vague with it. And then I start writing. Um, there are a number of authors who plan every little detail out. This happens, and this happens, and this happens, and when this happens, these different things are going on. Uh, others are a little more stream of conscience. They have the basic ideas, and then they just start writing. I tend to do a little bit of both, uh, but it depends what I'm trying to write. If I'm writing a short story, I'll get my basic ideas, and I'll start writing. If I'm writing a comic book, I have to break it down. I have to say, okay... On this page, this happens. Now let's break that down into, in this panel, this happens, we show this, followed by this, because it's a sequential type of storytelling. Now a novel and a short story and all the others, they are sequential. They tell the story through time. The comic book, you also have to work in the visuals with it. But in some cases, especially if you're working with someone else, the use of detailed planning helps out a lot. Um, now, I've, I, I said this somewhat, slightly awkwardly, but when you are, when you get your brainstorming done, a lot of times it's really good to do a basic outline. Now, your outline can be very basic for short stories or for novellas and even novelettes. But for those novels, you might want to broaden your outline, really get into the details. And then you can break your story into what are called beats, kind of like the beat of a drum. This happens here in this section, then we move on to this section, then we move on to this section. Um, or this, this, this. The way this is, the reason for doing this is to make sure your story is paced correctly. You don't want it to be all action and then all nothing, or action, nothing, action, nothing. You want it to be even. You want, you want it to flow nicely. Um, a major benefit to having a good outline is also when it comes to the editing stages. Uh, I recommend to everyone proofreading your own stuff. Proofread. Re write it, write part of it, then read it out loud. When you read it out loud, you'll catch a lot of mo lot more mistakes. So read it out loud, fix it as you go. You get done, read it again. Maybe record yourself reading it, and then just listen to it. And if it sounds natural, if the grammar's correct, if the spelling is correct, then you're able to move on, have someone else read it, uh, get other people's opinions on it, and then you know go for submitting it for publication and whatnot. Um, these are not hard and fast rules. You know, every writer has their own style. They don't necessarily they don't necessarily outline. I talked with the author novel writer, comic book author, uh, Marjorie Liu, a few months ago. And she said that she does not do a strict outline for anything she writes, um, for her comics or for her novels. She gets her basic ideas, and then she starts writing. Now, this is fine. This is a perfectly fine way. Um, I do this somewhat, but I like to have a little more of a plan. Um because you can get bogged down a little more. You can hit that writer's block. That, oh crap, what did I just do? Now one thing Marjorie Liu told me was that when she gets writer's block, it's usually because something she wrote before doesn't jive. It, it doesn't fit with the rest of the stuff. It could be the tempo. It could be, well, this character said this and then did this. Um... But in my opinion, having a decent outline will allow you to have less of those types of mistakes and allow you just to keep writing. 
um, it helps you to go on with the writing process, get it done, and make things more in depth, make things clearer for the reader. Um, that's going to do it for this week's Friday workshop. Um, join us Tuesday for another episode of The Wide World of Geek, where we're going to have uh, announcements from Comic-Con and whatever else might have happened in this last week of Geek. Um, thank you for watching. Uh, like this video, leave a comment, share it with your friends, um, and I will see you guys next time.